test to maybe scan, and they found two um, adenomas in my neck. At that time, it was decided just to go ahead and remove the whole thyroid and um, to implant some parathyroid tissue into my arm. Um, we did that and uh, went through that surgery and the calcium still never came down. Mm -hmm. They were still high normal. They weren't above normal. For instance, before I had the, my thyroid removed with, the, with another two parathyroids, my calciums were in the 15 mm -hmm. range, which was very, very high. So normal at Mayo is 8.9 milligrams per deciliter to 10.1, and yours is at 15. Yes. We get concerned at Mayo when it gets that high, that can be a lethal problem causing dysrhythmias of the heart, mm -hmm. and it can also be a sign of potential a malignant parathyroid problem. That's typically not the case with MEN. So you had parathyroid tissue removed, the doctor thinking maybe that that's it, and mm -hmm. they implanted this Into parathyroid. The uh, problem with that is the tissue is abnormal and it flourishes mm -hmm. and it typically makes it out of control and most people have to go back and have that taken out, which is what you have. Yes. Yeah. But at that time we didn't know that. You know, again, yep. you know, I, I kind of like have followed the MEN history of new things being developed and stuff. You know, it was thought that this would prevent me from having um, calcium problems. At some point in time, you came to the Mayo Clinic and mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to meet you at that time and mm -hmm. you had... Uh, elevated calcium level. Yes. You had a mildly elevated gastrin level. Mm -hmm. You went through a battery of different tests, and we found through a Hawkeye CT scan and Cesta maybe an area in the chest that looked like it was abnormal. Mm -hmm. We couldn't find anything abnormal in the neck. You went through a, lots of gymnastics, and we eventually decided, rightly or wrongly, to go into the chest to try to lower the calcium level because some people benefit with their gastrin levels when you do that. You had a thoracotomy. Dr. Cassidy and myself, mm -hmm. we removed some tissue way down deep in the deep recesses of your um, chest. We used the intraoperative PTH at the time and you had a wonderful drop. And I was mm -hmm. concerned that maybe this was the last parathyroid cell left in your body, which is never true when, when it comes to MEM. You got through that operation okay and your calcium was actually on the lowish side mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. Could you tell a difference? With the calcium being lower, some people notice they feel better, their muscles work better, their memory's better. Was there any difference for you? No. Not a bit. I've never had, you know, a lot of people call MEN the bone stones and mounds disease. I've never had mm -hmm. that effect. But prior to coming here, I had a sternotomy done, and they tried to remove what they that tumor yeah. And it was unsuccessful. Yeah. So that's that's when I decided to come to Mayo Clinic to a place where, you know, MEN is the routine, not just the, yeah. you know, oh, let me go in the back and look at the medical book thing. And um, that operation went went smoothly, went fine. Um, and um, it, it was a real education for me because I found there were two different types of cystic maybe scans, mm -hmm. a 2D and a 3D, mm -hmm. the 3D being done here so that you knew exactly yeah. where you were going. Yeah. Let me move forward then. You did well from that operation. The mm -hmm. calcium is low when the PTH level sort of creeps up, but the calcium was still sort of on the lowish normal side mm -hmm. with you taking calcium pills. I did. I took um, uh, maximum ultra straight Tums every day. And to fast forward, your gastrin goes up. High. And we know <laughs> that you have problems with the diarrhea and the ulcer disease, and you have MEN, and there's you have Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Mm -hmm. You go through a variety of different tests, and you and I struggle for the couple things on what's best for you. Right. Because your father had illness, correct, at some point? My father had pan had died of pancreatic cancer okay. during while we were kind of, before we had gone through yeah. this. So... We so, were looking at the pancreas. So father has pancreatic cancer, which nobody likes to get, and that tends to be a lethal problem. Absolutely. Your mother's clearly the MEN character, and she underwent a Whipple operation, a pancreatectomy at some point? She actually did not go uh, have a whole Whipple. She had a partial Whipple. Okay. She still had her pancreas, and she uh, did not have to take any kind of um, glucose medications, any insulin or any oral medications. But she had some islet cell tumors that yes. secrete hormones. And she Actually, had... she had insulin, an insulinoma. Yeah. Okay. 
So at some point, we make the decision mm -hmm. to operate on you. And what I want to really fixate here is the post-operative care and mm -hmm. how, how things went and how things didn't go so well. Because mm -hmm. you had a couple complications. And I want to speak candidly and honestly about that. Absolutely. You had a laparotomy and part of the pancreas removed. You had your duodenum opened up. We removed a nodule there that showed that it had gastrin uh, tissue in it. And you had this laparotomy. Question number one is, you've had cervical explorations, you've had sternotomy, thoracotomy, and laparotomy. That's four different operations, if you will. Tell me about pain with okay. each of those four things. Well, the parathyroidectomies, there's relatively little pain at all. Um, I went home the next day, and there really wasn't a lot of pain. I think I just I just took Motrin. Okay. Um, Sternotomy? Sternotomy, um, there was a lot of pain. And it was very difficult to get over the sternotomy because you, I had, you know, just like someone with open heart surgery, I had chest tubes and um, and had to actually, you know, recover from an open heart surgery yeah. because when they couldn't find the tumor, they actually did go into the pericardial sac and and look at everything. Mm -hmm. um, in the hospital, I was given morphine, and um, I woke up as they were starting to intubate me. Now, this is after our laparotomy you're talking this, about. This is no. This is before. This is the first time with morphine. With the thoracotomy. With the or sternotomy. With the sternotomy. Yeah, and and I, I just you know I was just told well. You know, you you're really probably not allergic to morphine, but you, you know, we did have to uh, push Narcan, and you almost were intubated, and and I woke up during that. Then when I had the thoracotomy here, I had uh, epidural, mm -hmm. um, and I believe the epidural was fentanyl, mm -hmm. and that great great pain relief. Mm -hmm. Um, my experiences with uh, epidurals um, for pain control has been absolutely wonderful. Okay. I think that they're really the best pain control. Okay. So let me fast forward because as a general surgeon, I'm mm -hmm. always nervous to give somebody an epidural catheter mm -hmm. because if you give somebody too much narcotic, right. they can stop breathing. Right. Um, so I'm a little reluctant to do that. And you had a sizable laparotomy, sizable mm -hmm. incision. You as a nurse, you as a patient, knew that you had good results with the epidural. Mm -hmm. Tell me how the epidural went with this operation here at the Mayo Clinic. At the Mayo Clinic, I don't remember waking up from surgery at all. Okay. I woke up fighting for my life. I had been intubated. I was intubated. And... Um, I mean, literally fighting, I, you know, and someone, I remember someone sitting on me, I mean, just trying to hold me down. And um, it's, you know, people talk about those spiritual experiences mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm, I'm, I was there, but I was coming back. I mean, I was coming yeah. back and someone was holding me down and I had this tube and everything. And I just really felt like I was in the fight of my life. Mm -hmm. This this was going to make me or break me. I was going to live or die. And I remember having these thoughts. Yeah. Um, once I got settled into the ICU, being an ex-ICU nurse, my first thing is to start writing on a pad. And, um, you know, they told me what happened and, you know, we're very honest about it. Um, I think an important thing to remember at that time, if someone asks for some spiritual spiritual person to be mm -hmm. there, I'm, I'm Catholic, I was very comforted by a priest coming. Mm -hmm. um, they let my husband in, and he stay, and he could stay with me, and that was very important to mm -hmm. me too. And um, I, want, I, I just want to stress that when Narcan wears off, the patients know. I mean, I knew because I could feel myself trying to pass out and just depend on the vent mm -hmm. to breathe. And um, it was a, it's very emotional. And, um, you know, I have done some reading on this. And there are things that people 
will remember their whole lives and will talk about and talk about and talk about. Being intubated 